The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Again, another twist and turn in who is the 44th president of the United States, Barack Obama. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a huge fan. Please say good morning. Welcome back to 710K in U.S. Jack Casho joins us. Good morning, sir. Thanks for doing the show again this morning. Yeah. Hey, Peter, my pleasure. Anytime. Um, well, now you've had a chance to look at all this, quote, new documents, the 68 Ansaturo's 68 app to extend the passport and the rest of this stuff, and the um, appearance of this new name, and then this video that was put together this weekend is fabulous. We have it up, 710knus.com. Jack's with American Thinker. He's the guy that broke the code on uh, Dreams from My Father, uh, which he obviously points out is quite overwhelming, that that book was written by Bill Ayers, not written by the president. So where do we go and what do we do with all this um, this latest stuff, Jack? Well, you know, it's a question of, I think, of um, someone uh, finally uh, connecting all the dots. And they're out there to be connected. The question is, I mean, sometimes it's, it's so tempting to connect dots that seem like they ought to be connected but may not be related. Like, mm-hmm. for instance, the death of Loretta Fuddy, you know, which is, you know, if you were writing a novel, it would be perfect, you know. Oh, yeah. But in real life, well, Loretta Fuddy, by the way, is the uh, Department of Health, the Hawaii uh, person who was drowned or died of a arrhythmia, allegedly, in this plane crash. She was I mean, uniquely yeah, it's right, it's deceased. Right, it's right yeah. out of the Clinton's playbook, isn't it? <laughs> it really well, is. It, it certainly yeah. seems that way. It yeah. has a, a Ron Brown uh, yeah, right. uh, taint all about it. And yet, you know, uh, yet, you know, if you're being serious about your investigations into this sort of thing, as tempting as it is to link it, Mm-hmm. Oh, you yeah. can't do that, you know, without knowing for sure. I agree. I mean, because when I look at something like that, I, I say, okay, how could they have possibly planned this, and who could possibly have executed it? And, and it strikes me as unlikely. Yeah. That much said, it does, you know, it, it does shine light on their this whole, um, you know, this whole phenomenon that. Um, you know, the uh, of her relationship to Ann Dunham mm-hmm. and to this clown back in Indonesia who looks fittingly like uh, Barack Obama. You know? I, but I thought, you know, we've been looking at Frank Marshall Davis's mug since Joel Gilbert yeah. did his film, and then all right. of a sudden there comes a curveball, you know, throws the deuce, you know, and this guy looks like him. So uh, that's got everybody in the Internet talking this morning. But I love the, the subbud cult. What what do they believe in subbud? Well, you know, that's, it's hard to figure that out, and, and it they make it sound very uh, benign, you know. Uh, basically, they you know they, they seem to believe that, you know, it is, although it's uh, something, uh, even though Mr. Subud, Master Subud, uh, whoever Chief Subud was, was a Muslim, uh, this is, um, it's not an Islamic religion, and I'm not even sure it's, it's a religion as mm-hmm. such. It seems like more like one of those, Kind of cults you'd find in California, like I Ching or something. You know, <laughs> what, was, what was Scientology? Yeah, it would yeah, make you feel good. Yeah, that's Scientology. Yeah, they're buying big. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> but you know, and, and as much as I read about it, I still have a very hard time uh, trying to figure out what it is. You know, it's a it, it has a Scientology kind of ring about it. it you know, I think so, so too. Yeah, I do. Uh, that much said, the connection. You, know, you keep seeing these names appear in the connection, like, okay, uh, so they get, they all get uh, alternative names, apparently, and um, which can bring us back to Sabarka, the name that was on that passport application, and that still, uh, to my knowledge, remains, uh, I haven't seen a convincing explanation of where that name came from. This, by the way, is how uh, the name that, that was applied to a young Barack Obama by his mother on the passport application, uh, and then was crossed out mm-hmm. for a variety of reasons, and I've seen different explanations for what, that. What do you buy? What Which one do you buy these different – the one on the film, on the video, makes a lot of sense, that maybe he didn't have any birth certificate at all, and the mother's trying to find a way to get him one or whatever it was, but, boy, that's a lot of curveballs in this, isn't there? Yeah, I would say, you know, there was an excellent article in American Thinker last Wednesday by a fellow who I wasn't aware of until he wrote the article. He's an associate professor at California University, which means, A, he has tenure. We had him on a radio show. We talked to him. Oh, on you Friday. did? Yeah, he's a Ph.D. He's, yeah. You know, he's, yeah. he's, he's got his, you know, his ducks are in a row. 
Um, oh, and but I thought his thesis was the most compelling I've seen so far as to as to why they would go to the trouble of concealing and presumably forging a birth certificate uh, if, in fact, Obama was born in uh, Hawaii as claimed. And that is, as I'm sure you talked about on Friday, was to protect uh, or to shield the public from the knowledge that Obama had been adopted and became an Indonesian citizen. And if that were true, it explains a lot of other things, including the trip to Pakistan uh, when, and when he was, mm -hmm. um, I guess that would have been about 1980. It was a Columbia. 81. It was a Columbia then. Yeah, right. Right. That was between sophomore and junior years. And what a he, trip that he never mentioned anywhere ever. until three weeks after his passport files mm -hmm. had been uh, purged by uh, an employee of uh, Brennan, the guy who's now the head of the uh, CIA. Mm. You know, so. And he actually, so he, he actually slips up because he, he makes his speech in San Francisco, if what I understand is true, and he says, well, he, he says this about going to, and he, he roomed at, we know at least this much, we're pretty sure, that at Columbia, he, he stayed as a foreign national. The, his two roomies were Pakistanis. Is that, is that how right. you, you understand it that way? Yes. So, yeah. And, and as according to people who were there at the time, say that the university had a policy of taking foreign kids, foreign nationals, or foreign-born, and they lived together. And so he's got two Pakis who happen to be Muslims, and the third roommate is Barack Hussein Obama, fill in the blank. And they all right. live together. And, they're, and so now they, he wants, they want to take him home. And so, but he makes this speech in San Francisco. Am I, am I right so far about this? He yeah, a fundraising speech in uh, 2008. And he said he talked about going to Pakistan, but first he had to go back to Jakarta to visit his mother, Stanley Ann. Well, right. they time-framed that, and Stanley Ann was no longer in Jakarta. She was back in Hawaii, had been back in Hawaii for quite a time. And so what some, this is what some people suspicion or some people argue or ask, did he go to Jakarta to get his Indonesian passport that he was granted as a little boy renewed so he could travel into Pakistan as an Indonesian Muslim, and that way avoid any problems. Now, traveling to Pakistan when he went, or at least that time that he goes, it, was, it wasn't a no-go. It wasn't like North Korea or Cuba, but it was we had um, the American State Department, what does what, Jack, it advises you not to go there. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. And so, uh, it was, yeah, it was, it was, well, you're right. It wasn't off limits, but it was, uh, you, you were discouraged from going there. And so he goes to and there's no all his travel records have been have been suppressed suspended destroyed whatever they've done with them and it doesn't say who he traveled with and in fact he never in you figure in a book where he's talking about traveling the world and seeing all these things that enlighten his life what's missing from that that narrative well you know it's interesting in reading the obama biographies and and uh, by the way one of them I, I believe it's Jenny Scott's puts obama's mother in jakarta at the time which doesn't change the story, really. But what's interesting is that uh, Scott uh, and Remnick both talk about the trip. David Remnick is the New York editor who's said, who just told Charlie Rose last week, there's not a hint of scandal about the Obama yeah, administration. I love that, yeah. Um, uh, they had them going in different directions. You know, you think you're a biographer and you're telling this a pretty critical part of the story about his trip to Pakistan. You would get that straight. I mean, in other words, in, in one telling, I forget what who's, but I think it was um, Remnick's. He goes to Pakistan and then Indonesia, and Scott's. He goes to Indonesia and then to Pakistan. They had the timing different in each book. It was it was in the summer during Ramadan. We hear that but it was, you know, one was before Ramadan and the afterwards. Uh, the biographers have never been able to get the story straight. These are people who spend years digging into this, and they can't get the story straight or choose not to get the story straight. And then we are uh, somehow uh, crazy for doubting them or mm -hmm. doubting the official narrative. Mm -hmm. And what's intriguing, too, Peter, is that uh, in Audacity of Hope, particularly, and in Dreams from My Father, he had every reason to talk about his, Obama, his Pakistani trip, because especially in the latter book, he was beginning to build his foreign policy credentials. And part of his strategy on the campaign tour uh, in the, uh, during the primary season was to show that his international experience was comparable to Hillary's, if not superior, because he had a, a boots-on-the-ground kind of feel for it. And 
but he kept the Pakistan story out of the narrative until three weeks after his buddies uh, pilfered the uh, passport files. That's amazing. Uh, and I think, I, personally, I think that is the, uh, at the, with the MacGuffin of the whole story, mm-hmm. is the, uh, the Brennan people's incursion into the passport files, a story that's been remarkably underreported. It had, did happen. No one, you know, even the major networks admit that one of Brennan's people did do go in there and do this. As cover, they threw in, oh, yeah, he looked at McCain's and Hillary's or whatever, but mm-hmm. he went three times into the Obama files. And um, that's where I, I think they had to get that, make sure that that passport record was straight before he could start talking about his Pakistani visit. Yeah. I don't know. We spoke with Jerry this morning, obviously with you. We spoke with Joel Gilbert. We've spoken with uh, with uh, Kistner. We've talked to all these different people. Everybody arrives sort of at the same place that begins with, I have no idea how this fits. I have no idea what this does to the narrative. But it certainly at least changes it somewhat or it fortifies or or shores up sort of the some of the original or early questions. Is that fair, Jack? Yeah, yeah. And it's an air of mystery, too, because part of the sub, you know, when you see these cities that are associated with it, uh, Loretta Fuddy is somehow... Uh, the head of the Seattle branch. Yeah, the Seattle you know? branch, yeah. And then they... we see Chicago mm-hmm. as part of the uh, connection. Uh, and these are all cities that are, you know, critical to Obama's narrative, uh, especially uh, uh, the, the Seattle part. We know about Chicago. We know mm-hmm. who lived there, et cetera. But the Seattle part is still uh, unspoken. Yeah, and for those who have never followed that story, the documents exist that Stanley Ann Dunham takes a little baby who's probably less than 10 days of age and flees, leaves the rock, goes back to where she spent her her high school or spent her middle school in Seattle and enrolled in the university. The documents are there. The babysitters have been met. The rent checks I and mean, everything. I mean, excuse me, the uh, yeah. the places where she lived. But what's not, I mean, now we're led to, remember the governor of Hawaii? I went with them socially yeah. to these parties and they were, and, oh my God, what a, what a, outright lie and well Abercrombie uh, uh, Neil Abercrombie who was uh, uh, had been a congressman and he was elected governor in 2012 you know when the Berger uh, issue when, when uh, actually when uh, Donald Trump first made a big issue mm-hmm. of this and you know forced it into the news and I guess that would have been 2011 Abercrombie came forth and said listen I was there at the birth yeah that's a quote I was there at the birth and then he starts backing off of that, saying, well, I wasn't exactly there at the birth, but I saw the mother and father, and because they brought little ba- little Barry, that's what we called him, mm-hmm, yeah. to the very social events. It's a lie. Well, uh, even uh, David Marin is the most recent Obama biographer, and, and a halfway serious one, you know. Um, this proves all that. No one had even ever seen Anne and Barack Obama together. No, no. None of their friends ever had. He confirmed that she was gone within days. And that was she was into Seattle, and so there were no social events for her, her little Barack and <laughs> and uh, to attend. And then Abercrombie started mending his story a little bit. Then he started saying, "Well, you know, mostly I saw him, um, you know, later with the grandfather, which is possible, but even that is probably just made up as well, exaggerated." I, I agree. And then uh, there was the uh, really interesting uh, introduction to the story by uh, a fellow named Mike Evans, who's a celebrity reporter out of Hollywood, who was a friend of Abercrombie's, and he claimed on air, it's on 37 different stations, <laughs> that Abercrombie told him that he promised, as soon as he was elected governor, he'd get to the bottom of the birth of nonsense, yep. that was what he used, nonsense, yep. and that he was going to clarify it all, yep. but that as soon as he got in the governor, he found out that there was no birth certificate. So Evans goes on the air and says this. I remember course, we had to go to the know, radio show. We, yeah, we right, 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 right. Yeah, he said I... And then, then of course, yeah. The, the hammer his, comes down on his head, and then, of course, a day later, he said, well, I never actually talked to, uh, you know, you know Evans. Well, then he backed it up. Yeah, but you got the yeah. cuts. I mean, there's cuts for him saying, yeah, I talked to Neil, and Neil said there isn't one. <laughs> and he thought, he, you know, he kind of thought like he was covering Madonna or something, you know, and... Right. And it just blew up in his face. Now, given all this mystery, you know, you would think that uh, someone in the major media no. would take it upon themselves to uh, explore it. Yep. You know, but they don't. They do the opposite. And and what was embarrassing, I said, I would, you know, from a, any kind of journalistic history perspective, is that 
the first three or four biographers, uh, these are serious biographers, New York Times, Boston Globe, New Yorker, to get into the Seattle part of the Obama story, are purposely obfuscated it because they wanted to sustain the illusion that Barack, uh, I mean, that Barack Sr. and that Ann Dunham had actually created a family life. Yeah. Uh, because that was part of the sustaining mythology that yeah. came out of the 2004 and 2008 convention. The, the, improbable, so lied. the improbable story. Right. So they kind of mentioned Seattle, like she went there like for a weekend mm-hmm. or, you know, she went mm-hmm. there later or whatever. No, but she went to school. None, none of them would face up to the fact, as Marinus finally did, that there was no, uh, they never lived together. Well, that, I mean, not anywhere they never lived together. That might might have been a one night stand. At best, it was a one night stand. And plenty of people believe that it was the other guy, and you know all this kind of stuff. But as a, as a final question, and we're going to have you on later in the week if we can, Jack, what does this latest bit of data mean to the entire picture, to to the, to the story? That means uh, that the story is even deeper and crazier mm-hmm. and more mysterious yeah. than we had anticipated. Yeah. You know, I mean, it really is. It's it's almost like these modern. Uh, they're, they're, in the end of the, they're always called a swerve ending, where you think this guy's a good guy, but he turns out to be the bad guy. You know, right. and there's a swerve in the story, and I'm waiting for the swerve because the story gets yeah. gets more and more complex at the same time. It sort of simplifies itself at the same time that it really comes to it's whatever the official story is, it's not true. Right. Bruce Willis is really dead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, that's that's, that's right. the word we're looking for. You're yeah. right. It's like reading a novel yeah. and then waiting for – I keep waiting for and, – and the nice thing is we have new and different contributors chipping into the story. All the, the time, yeah. yeah. It's like the – And end, I'm it, appreciative of that. I'm always appreciative of people who had real new – information and this was you great. Know? yeah yeah, it, yeah. And, it, that, and that's what i thought the sub stuff was uh, fascinating it's, in that regard. it's like the end of jaws when richard dreyfus surfaces <laughs> yeah right <laughs> you, you think the shark ate him but no <laughs> all right jack i love you man thank you sir for this jack cashel american okay. thinker thank you right. this is peter boyles news talk 710 knus right, we're going to go right to work on this because dan cap is standing over casey's shoulder and I want him to get full value of this before we transition. This is up on our website, 710knus.com. It was developed this weekend. I saw it for the first time. I, I saw it Sunday for the first time. Look at it, please, 710knus.com, case if you would. In a heavily resourced and documented article at AmericanThinker.com titled Barack Hussein Sobarka by Jason Kistner, we find some amazing discoveries regarding the identity problem of Barack Hussein Obama. Jason Kistner is an associate professor of criminology at California State University, Fresno. Following is an edited synopsis of that article with an absolutely surprising find by the P.P. Simmons staff at the end of this video. One of the unexplained mysteries in the all but missing documentation of the early life of Barack Obama is the appearance of the name Sobarka as his last name on an official document filled out by his mother. We are in possession of Stanley Ann Dunham Sotoro's 1968 application to extend her 1965 passport for an additional two years. Her passport, by the way, is now reportedly destroyed. On the second page of the application, Ann Dunham attempted to exclude her son Barack Obama, or Sobarka, from her passport. But the item has been crossed out, perhaps on the advice of the consulate in Jakarta, as this would have left seven-year-old little Barry passportless, so the exclusion did not happen. The appendage, Sobarka, seems to indicate a name change or a change in citizenship status for the boy. But there is a very good and surprisingly simple explanation for the seemingly random appearance of the name Sobarka on Obama's mother's passport application. Believe it or not, the reason appears to be linked to Loretta Fuddy. That's right, the same Loretta Fuddy, the Hawaii State Health Director, who approved the release of Obama's long-form birth certificate, and who recently and mysteriously died in a plane crash off the coast of Molokai. Obama's mother and Loretta Fuddy have one very strange factor in common. Both have been directly linked to the Subud cult, which originated in, of all places, Indonesia. 
and was founded by the Javanese Muslim Mohammed Sabu. The small cult appears to have around 20,000 members worldwide. Fuddy's cult member name was Diliana. Her official position was regional helper. Note also that the World Sabud organization seems to have been based in, of all cities, Chicago. Wow, think about it. Indonesia, Chicago, Hawaii, three locales linked directly and very importantly to Obama's life. We also know from a Hawaii Advertiser article that Sabud was introduced to Hawaii in the 1960s. Obama's mother was directly linked to Sabud by her biographer and New York Times reporter Janie Scott in the book A Singular Woman, The Untold Story of Barack Obama's Mother. This book was reviewed by the New York Times, so this is a heavily documented fact. Loretta Fuddy worked her way up the ranks and became chairwoman of Sabud USA, based in Seattle, from 2006 to 2008. But note that of all the persons that could have been installed as director of the State Department of Health in Hawaii, Hawaii chose Fuddy, a leader of a small cult with roots in Indonesia and connections to Barack Obama's mother. Secondly, remember that Fuddy assumed the directorship position in Hawaii in January 2011 after being appointed by Hawaii's governor just a few months before the release of Obama's long-form birth certificate. Changing one's name for spiritual reasons was something frequently done by followers of the cult Sabud. And Stanley Ann Satoro was, in fact, closely associated with Sabud. We know that. It is reasonable, then, to suppose that Subarka, the name chosen for Obama on that passport arose in the same way new names for others, like Deliana Loretta Fuddy did. But remember that the name Subarka appears in the passport renewal section labeled Amend to Include or Exclude Children. The name Barack Hussein Obama Subarku is crossed out. This signifies that Obama's mother had apparently decided to exclude Barack from her passport renewal. Apparently, Stanley Ann Dunham Satoro changed her mind about the exclusion. Perhaps this was done after having been informed by the consulate there that doing so would leave Barack without a passport. But there is another possibility, one just as valid and even simpler. What if Obama's mother was trying to include Obama in the renewal, but she wasn't able to produce a birth certificate? And the Sabud name, Subarka, simply did not suffice legally. That could explain why the name Subarka appears nowhere else in any of Obama's documentation of which we are currently aware. But now for the real shocker in this entire matter. The staff at P.P. Simmons did some research and Get found ready. an old picture of the founder of the cult of Sabud. Bizarre. One Mohammed Sabu Sumohadi Wijojo. Do you see anything uh, odd Amazing. Here? Amazing. <laughs> Think about it. Oh. Fuddy, Obama's mother Dunham, Sabud, Hawaii, yeah. Chicago, yeah. Indonesia, and no birth certificate. Right. So Barca <laughs> on the passport. So bizarre. A dead Hawaii Department of Health director, oh. the one who conveniently certified Obama's forged and fabricated long form birth certificate. It's like a Bruce Willis movie. Are all of these simply odd coincidences? A coincidence? Or is there something more here? I'm telling you. I have a feeling we will soon know the truth. Right, Danny's rushing in the door. I tell you what, that's a, I, I see it. 710knus.com, Danny. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.